I'm checking out my friends. Once Philippine Airlines flight from Cebu, I headed up to Manila. And look, I've always been a Cebu, Cebu Pacific Air traveler because they're fucking cheap. But traveling on Cebu Pacific Air is like flying on Southwest Airlines. It's like a Greyhound bus with wings. If you pay a few more pesos more and get on Philippine Airlines, it is a totally different experience. Much more professional. I don't wait in line. It's, it's like night and day. It's the difference between flying Southwest or flying Delta. So look, if you're on a budget, which means you're broke, Cebu Pacific Air. If you have a few more fucking pesos, a few more dollars, Philippine Airlines. I'm in the back of the aircraft right now, and I'm at like a great decision because nobody, <laughs> nobody chose the seats in the rear of the aircraft. So I'm large and in charge. I'm the motherfucking king of the rear of this aircraft going up to Manila from Cebu. So I want to thank everybody for joining me. If you're not a subscriber, right down there in the bottom right hand portion of your screen, unless YouTube changes it, there's an overstay road sign. Go ahead and click that, hit subscribe, and I will change your life. I will at least invoke some thought in what you got going over in your camp. Let me give you a look around here. All right, this is Cebu, Mactan Cebu International Airport. Not the greatest airport in the world, but when you come in, when you come into this terminal, you get through security. If you take an immediate left, you can take a piss, and right there at the corner is a bar. And they actually have a couple of different local brews, little craft brews. So I stop in there. Get my beer, my homestead, that fucking place until it's time to get the hell out of here. So that's the way it is. And I want to thank everybody for the comments the past few days. Holy shit. You, you know, if I had known that <laughs> I could post a few videos and just be myself and I would get some of the funniest fucking commentary. I've ever listened to in my life, I would have started doing more of this shit a long time ago, because you guys cracked me up on the fucking comments, I mean, you guys are down to the details, you know, like when, a couple of you dudes talking about my watch, you know, it's a fake watch or some shit, you know what, let me, let me fucking clear this shit up about my watch, you see that fucking watch right there, probably can't see it, because I need a goddamn film crew, okay, look, let me hold that. Can you see that fucking watch? Probably can't. That watch is a Timex. It's a genuine Timex. And it came off a dead man. That's a long story. So it's a dead man's watch. And oh, by the way, the fucking watch hasn't worked in a decade. Maybe it's the battery. Maybe it's broke. I don't fucking know and I don't care. You know why? I'm going to show you right now. Because I set that motherfucker right there at like five minutes, maybe a little bit more. Five minutes and a few seconds till five. This watch don't fucking move. This watch is a jewelry piece, and when I look at it, and it says five minutes till five, it means that it's five o'clock somewhere, which is right where I'm at. And it means it's time, it's time for a fucking beer. Okay, I have not worn a watch. I have not worn a watch since I left America. And you speculators talking about, oh, he's got a fucking expensive dive watch. What the fuck is that, okay? No, I ain't got no expensive dive watch or a GPS watch. I got a broken fucking watch. For the purposes of a jewelry piece and the purposes of when I look at it and I see that 5 o'clock, it reminds me to grab a beer. Listen, true freedom, you are not married to fucking time. So no, I do not own a watch that works. This watch right here has not worked in a decade, all right? It's not worked in a decade. It's set for like a few minutes before five. 
and it is a Gen 1 Timex, so I don't know the value. What would somebody pay in the, in America for a broken fucking Timex? That's not a good question, because people in America buy fucking rubber dog shit. You know what I mean? So that's not a good question. It has no value. It's a broken fucking Timex. It's set for 5 o'clock, because it reminds me to have a fucking drink. So you guys talking about my watch? I love you guys, man. You guys pay attention to detail. You know what I mean? Fuck, it just fucking entertainment for me, folks. I'm gonna tell you, if I post one video, okay, yeah, you're entertained for whatever, 20 minutes. But these comments I get back, I am, I am fucking entertained for days. Thank you. Especially the crazy ones, the fucking haters, the trolls. Holy shit. <laughs> so anyway, I'm about to I'm about to roll out of here. Philippine Airlines. It's a boot to Manila. I gotta get up there and handle a little bit of business. And folks, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being a subscriber. And you know what? Leave a comment down below because you put a smile on my face when it's all jacked up. <laughs> I love it. I gotta go, folks. Holler to you later. This is an Airbus You know what? Don't you love it? Don't you love it when a dude's gonna wait right until the boarding door closes to go take a piss? It's like, dude, why didn't you get the fuck up and take a piss like 20 fucking minutes ago? You know? You know that guy? You know who I'm talking about, right? There's always a guy on a flight who's going to wait until the plane is fucking taxiing to decide he's got to take a piss. God damn it, motherfuckers. It's like if you got to fucking take a piss, make a fucking command decision like a king and go fucking piss. Don't wait until you can't hold it anymore. And then you decide you got to fucking take a piss. Here's another one right here indecisive motherfucker all right listen if i gotta fucking piss i'm gonna get up and piss i'm not gonna wait until i can't fucking hold it and the seatbelt sign is on or we're taking off for landing and then you go back there like a fucking bitch don't do that shit be a fucking man grab a set of balls and fucking go all right i'm out of here it's time to zip up my jacket motherfucking Flame resistant from Carhartt. Folks, I am dressed properly for any emergency evacuation on this aircraft. I don't wear I don't wear a motherfucking bathing suit or flip flops anymore. With my balls hanging out, I prepare for the worst case scenario. And I'm wearing Carhartt gear and some combat boots and I'm ready. Peace out. Alright, King Marcos, this is the tower. You are clear for takeoff, sir. Thank you very much, gentlemen. The King is leaving. Cebu. Next stop, Manila. Go with throttle low. folks right there living in them squatter homes right around the coast just trying to catch a fish and survive think your fucking life is tough I assure you it's not beautiful day
the Philippines. Such a beautiful place, beautiful country. Even with the hardships, it's a beautiful, beautiful place in the globe. Anybody's interested in shooting on an iPhone 8 Plus, shooting 4K, 24 frames per second. My preferred way to shoot is 24 frames. I love the video look, the or not the video, the film look. Yes, the 60 frames per second is more clear, but uh, I like shooting 24 frames. Beautiful view right here over Cebu City. Alright folks, we're almost to on our way, well not almost, we're on our way to a cruising altitude. So I'm gonna chill out. I'm gonna see you when we get to Manila. Thanks for joining. Alright folks now. You see those two little beautiful islands down there? Okay, it's just, just kind of south of Luzon. I'm thinking about buying those two islands. But there's only two problems. Um, I mean, they're beautiful. Beautiful location, beautiful beaches. I'm thinking about buying them. But two issue, issues are, number one, they're not for sale. Number two, I ain't got no money. Other than that, when we flew over them motherfuckers, I was thinking about buying both of them. Maybe get a two-for-one special. <laughs> Alright, folks, now listen. Come on, let's do. Sun was shining. It was beautiful. Sun was shining. It was a beautiful day. Now I'm flying into Vanilla. Not so beautiful. Yeah. Really, the city's not so beautiful either. So we're coming in with a little bit of fog, a little bit of a little bit of rain here. Let's see what see what we can do. A slight chop. You know what? When I'm flying, I like to I like to have a little chop. I mean, there's not some, some good chop on the flight. I mean, it's like going on a roller coaster and not having any, you know, not being scared or anything. So I love I love to have a little bit of choppiness. It's good entertainment. I like to see the looks on people's faces when we hit the chop. All right, so looks like clearing up here. The uh, tower has cleared the King Marcos arrival. The presidential plane I'm riding on. We will be landing shortly. Take a look at this at the sights here. Damn, Manila is one of the most densely populated places on the earth. Very crowded. And, I mean, if you didn't know what you were looking at, you would, if you just glance up, you'd probably think I'm over a dump. But that's just Manila. A buddy of mine, Dr. Wayne, said one time, he said when he first flew over Manila back in the 70s, that his suggestion was to just take a bunch of 747s or cargo planes and have them fly over Manila and drop paint any color just start just start dropping paint if you ever been to Manila you know exactly what he's talking about 
and, and I think that'd be a good idea. You get a fleet of about a thousand, thousand cargo aircraft, load them up with with some paint, you know, various colors, make it a little more colorful, and just have them fly over like goddamn crop dusters, and just drop paint on this uh, disorganized a hodgepodge of just disorganization it damn sure ain't gonna hurt it I just tell everybody hey stay indoors today we're gonna drop paint over the whole city make it look more beautiful so shout out to Doc Wayne that's, that's a great suggestion man and he formulated that opinion back in the 70's but it ain't changed the same shit flower manila Call Sherwin Williams or whatever the paint company's name is. Donate some paint to the cause. Alright, folks, we're coming into Nino Aquino International Airport, Manila Airport. Captain of this flight, done a great job. Now, other than just a little two seconds of chop, a great flight. And Smooth on the back. Go with speed brakes. And just a pitch perfect landing. It's a wonderful flight on Philippine Airlines. That brought me from Cebu on up to Manila. Wonderful experience. Uh, thanks to the ladies. On the, on the flight, the uh, flight crew, the flight crew, professional, wonderful ladies, thank you very much. And it's time to go. See you guys on the next video, next video, the next adventure.